you have an interest in horses and love learning more about horses, the horse industry, teaching, or even managing your own horse business, then you're in the right place. We would love you to join us on our mission, which is to improve the lives of horses around the world through the education of riders, handlers, and trainers. So get comfortable, listen in, and enjoy. Today I'd like to introduce you to Carlos de Clearmarca, who was actually born in the Congo to Belgian parents, started to do a lot of show jumping in Belgium, and then every week um, started to go to Germany, did some exams in Germany, and is now qualified Förder Wirtschaftmeister, and is also qualified in Australia as Level 3 Dressage Coach, and I'd like to introduce you to Carlos. Hi, Carlos. How are you today? Hi, Glennis. Good, thank you. <laughs> good, good, good. Carlos, now I explained a little bit about you being born in the Congo. I was very surprised when you said Congo. I actually was trying to work out if it was Belgium or Germany. And you said Congo and I said, where's that? And you said in Africa. Just tell me a little bit about why you were born in Africa to Belgian parents. Yeah, after the Second World War in the 1950, my parents went to Congo because you could make quite good money there mm -hmm. and um, they went there for 10 years Yes, and we came back then. I was born then in 1955 mm -hmm. and had uh, a nice five years in the Congo and then in 1960 we went, all the family went back to Belgium. Okay, wonderful. Now, you did a lot of show jumping in Belgium. How did you start show jumping? Do you remember or how did you start, you know, what were things like when you first started show jumping? Have you got any of those early memories you can share with us? Yes. Um, my first instructor, when I was seven, I started to write. My father wanted that we did some sport. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, we wanted to have a go with horses. So because the instructor was a show jumper, mm -hmm. Van Paasen was his name, he was quite very popular. We took lessons from him and, of course, then started also to do show, some show jumping competitions. Um, I had not much idea about dressage, but <laughs> yeah, all there was all about show jumping. Okay. But after that, I went, when I was 10 to my 15 years old, I went always with um, Christmas time, I went to Germany. And I did, that was a two-week clinic, two or three weeks it was. And was that, we did that was every there. every year you did the two or three weeks? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I did. So, yeah, three, four years I went there for mm -hmm. two, three weeks. And that opened finally my eyes to, to dressage too, because we did also dressage there. We did the boats. I was very impressed about the level three instructor there. He could write like, for me, it was amazing. He did Piaf and Passage and all these high-level things. Mm -hmm. And we were watching and um, he did also high-level uh, show jumping. But the dressage was just amazing. Mm, mm, mm. And it opened my eyes and I said, oh my God, I would like also to get my horse on a bit like he can get him <laughs> on the big <laughs> yeah. that, that would have been a fantastic experience. Uh, it was, it was. Now, your favourite quote. You tell me your favourite quote. Well, let us have a go. Yep. I say always, you know, when I explain something or somebody comes with me and have some problems and uh, he explained the problems and then I say, well, let us have a go. Mm -hmm. Show me what's the problem or the, I tell them not to be too nervous and come on, let us have a go, you know. Mm -hmm. That's what I. <laughs> that, that can be very confident. Yeah, very, it's very confidence building for you know a high level instructor to be teaching and just say, let's just have a go. You know, you don't have to go out and do it brilliantly the first time, but let's just have a go. That's very good. Now, just thinking about your career with horses, but really it was the instructor that could ride and do dressage and do things very well at a high level. He he inspired you a lot, didn't he? About a career with horses. Yeah, he did. Mm, he did. Mm, and mm. that opened also my eyes. And from then, apparently, I was thinking to do my career there also in horses and mm -hmm. to try to do it. 
that finally was giving me the the inspiration to do it finally to try to do it because at that time it was not so easy to yeah to make your business and there were not many many writing schools at all so mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that's also the reason I went to Germany okay so your favorite quote about let's have a go was really influencing you back then when you said you weren't sure how it was going to be but let's have a go Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's right. Even my parents, you know, they were they were thinking, "Oh my God, oh, my horses." <laughs> I'm sure a lot of parents do that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right. Now, what about horses? Tell me about a horse or some horses that have influenced you and taught you. Well, I I had a very nice horse in my life. I had many very nice horses, but that was one of a special one. Um, A certain day, somebody came to me and um, he wanted that I uh, trained his horse and rode it in competitions. But it was the father from uh, a colleague from me who was also a professional rider mm -hmm. in dressage. I say, well, I don't know. Is that a good idea? <laughs> Do your son, does he know about that? And he said, yeah, yeah, that's all good. But yeah, his problems, uh, or the, the son had a problem with his horse, with the flying changes, and mm -hmm. um, he couldn't teach the flying changes. And, you know, by times, it's the combination. It, it didn't work really well together, mm -hmm. the rider mm -hmm. and the horse. And he was a good rider, nothing wrong with him. Mm -hmm. Then, then the horse came to my place and um, I have to say I walked a little bit back on the basic with him and after three, four months, he mm -hmm. got two very nice flying changes left and right and I started to compete him on lower levels. He was on level elementary at that time when I get him and finally uh, we teach him everything to Grand Prix like mm -hmm. Piaf and Passage. I did a small tour level with him so international and then one day the owner came to me and asked me well Carlos what would you like to ride next year Grand Prix or that with him or would you like that we sell him? And that was a very difficult question because um, I put a lot of work in the horse mm -hmm. and he put quite a lot of money also in adjustment and he was a very good horse mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. such horses are quite easy to sell. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking, well, but that the money is also important mm -hmm. and yeah, we came to an agree to sell down the horse and we did we did and it was sold in three weeks and that was it mm, mm, <laughs> but mm. he was such amazing horse um, the owner he went to florida mm -hmm. and that was a lady who bought him and i saw her one year later in set in holland mm -hmm. uh, in a big competition international and she came to me and say how happy she was with the oh, horse. Oh, very good. He was amazing. He had mm. a beautiful temperament. That was, for me, very important. Uh, good uh, memories. Yes, yes. I want you to think about if someone is just starting their career with horses or they're thinking about having a career, you know, coaching, training, tell me what advice you'd give them or their parents to start that career. Well, I think to be a good rider, important is to be physically and mentally fit. So physically fit is important. So when we are too much overweight, it's difficult. We can't breathe really. So we can work on that. So mm -hmm. we have to lose some weight. But it's very important to be a good rider, to be physically really fit. And you just can ride really well when also... Uh, the brains are really there when we mm -hmm. have mentally a little bit difficult we are not thinking good enough or the not thinking much enough by riding and the riding will never be that good than when we are also really concentrated to the horse so i think that's very important mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then when we start i think is to have a good instructor mm -hmm. because It's very important for me to learn directly the good things and not first the bad things. And then you have to correct that all. That's more difficult. So a good instructor is for me very important to teach you correct seats and teach you the right things to do. By all this belongs also a good horse, a school horse, 
who works with the rider, who knows his job a little bit, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. that when you get the right information from your instructor and do you do right things, that the horse reacts positive. That's mm -hmm. also mm -hmm. important. So I would say when we are young riders, we should have all schoolmasters first. Mm -hmm. Yes. And then later on, you know, we, we can change that and we can work with young horses. But finally, the quickest way to learn riding is on schoolmasters. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And also very important is the right saddle, because if you don't have the right gear and the saddle doesn't fit the horse or the, the saddle is not really in balance on the back of the horse, it's very difficult for a rider to sit properly on a saddle who doesn't fit really the horse. So mm -hmm. it helps really when the saddle fits the horse. Yes. And I think also to be self-critical a little bit, when you're riding by your own, by times, when somebody can take a video and you can watch yourself after you're riding, that's also something good. So you can see what you're doing mm -hmm. and that helps also. Good, good. All right. Now, you, you train a lot of top riders, you know, a, a large number of top riders. What makes a top rider become one that exceeds expectations, one that outshines, outrivals, dominates. They've got to be talented, but what makes them, gives them that extra edge? I like to train very much good riders because they can follow the instructions and mm -hmm. they can do what you tell them to do. And that's a good, that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. And a good top rider... I mean, it's also a very good horse. When I see in Australia, we have so much really good talent riders, but times we don't get really to the top because we don't have the right horse for the rider. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? So yes. um, it's not it's not just to have a good horse and to have a good rider who brings you to the top. You you need to be a harmony together. And and that brings really a rider to the top. So you need to be good and then have a very good horse and then teaching and that brings them really to the top. Have you ever seen riders that do have a good horse that just don't quite have what it takes to go further? How, you know, like I, I know that the horse that you had yeah. that was having trouble with its changes you talked about earlier – what could you have, looking back now and saying to that rider, what could they have done a bit different or a bit, just to get them over that bit of a hurdle? Well, when some exercises don't work like a flying change, mm -hmm. then we have to ask ourselves why. There is always a reason. And it doesn't help to do a thousand flying changes and they're all wrong and mm -hmm. bad. Mm -hmm. We have to work the basic. So we have to think, is the canter good enough? Is the horse sitting enough? Mm -hmm. Is there enough relaxation in the horse to ask a flying change? By times they are so nervous and so tense because they just wait after change. And that's where we have to teach them then not to be nervous, not to be tense mm -hmm. and teach them to have patience. Mm -hmm. Just asking them a change, perhaps when it doesn't really think about it. Mm -hmm. uh, there are many things that you can fix by really thinking what is wrong and uh, is the basic, is the pace okay. By every exercise, uh, flying changes when the canter is in four beat and he's not sitting enough, well, why should be the canter, the flying change and good, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That, that doesn't that doesn't work. Mm -hmm. when the horse is crooked, mm -hmm. yeah, you need to, many things important. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So at that time, I would say to the guy who had this problem with the flying changes, he wanted uh, that too quick. Mm -hmm. Yep. And he was giving the horse so much pressure that the horse was getting very very tense. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's why when I, when the man was giving me the horse, I needed three months, yes. four months to relax him. Yes. And get the trust back in the horse, mm -hmm. in his can to work. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. the flying changes came automatically. Good, good. Okay, so the trust and the basics going back 
to the basics, very important. Absolutely. When when something goes wrong, there is always something wrong in the basics, so we have to think mm-hmm. about that. All right. Now, thinking about your career with horses, what is your – I'm going to ask you your proudest moment as a rider and also your proudest moment as a coach. Well, I had with this horse – where we were talking about what with the flying change as well. There is the Belgium Trophy, we call that. It's a very big competition of the small two level, um, Pre Saint Georges Inter One, mm-hmm. but very big in Belgium because everybody comes there and try to win. And he won this competition. Oh, and wonderful. that was, mm. I was very happy and very proud about that. And also, I was very proud on a student. I make her Belgium champion young pony riders. Okay, so she's okay. 16 years old and won the Belgium championships. And uh, that was for me also a very, very good moment. Mm, mm, that's very good. Now, thinking that a lot of the listeners have got their own horses, got their own horses. They might have a couple. They might just have one. They might not have a horse. They they want to improve their riding. So what I'm looking at is a training tip, first of all, for people to improve their riding, but then a training tip that they can train and just as they're riding, just something that they can use to improve a horse that they're riding. First, the rider, when he starts to train a horse, I think it's very important that he enough the time mm-hmm. to teach his horse things. And not, I can see many riders are in a hurry to do things mm-hmm. and they go too quick in in a level where they, are, they should not be in that high level. They should be perhaps two levels lower. But they, they lack, I mean, Australians are really goers they likes you know <laughs> but you need still to give yourself some patience to get there and mm-hmm. to, to learn everything properly and as i say before it's very important for me as a rider to have many times lessons from a good instructor and working every time on the basic also on your seat thinking about your seat because if you're sitting wrong on the horse nothing goes right then mm-hmm. And every time uh, when you try to teach something and it doesn't work, just go a step back. Mm-hmm. So again, going back. Yeah, yep. one step back and yep. thinking, how can I do that better? Or the, mm-hmm. I was a little bit too quick mm-hmm. to ask, so a better way to a couple of days and then you ask again. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, to just giving the time. It's, it's a long way to teach horses uh, to the Grand Prix and as rider you need also many experience so to take regular lessons by good instructors will help a lot. Yeah yeah I'm just thinking you know like you're saying it's a long way for what sort of timeline are we looking at to take a young horse to Grand Prix and we're talking first of all with an experienced rider but then with a rider who's not so experienced has never gone any further, and this is their first Prom Pre horse. What sort of timeline are we looking at? Well, it's difficult to put a timeline on such things because, I mean, an experienced rider who was training more Grand Prix horses in his life, mm-hmm. it will go quicker. But I think we have to give the horses also some time to build their muscles and to be strong enough to keep doing that for a long time. Otherwise, mm-hmm. we have... Um, I know that Dr. Rainer Klimke had his horse Alorich Grand Prix when he was seven, mm-hmm. but you know that's very fast, and I don't think that is always good. I think when when you have your horse Grand Prix ready when he is ten, mm-hmm. nine, ten years old, mm-hmm. it's a good age, I think. Mm-hmm. And I think a young rider who never rode Grand Prix and have talent. I always think it's better to for him to buy first a Grand Prix schoolmaster yeah, to some yes. competitions mm-hmm, with him, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah, and then try to train it by yourself. Mm-hmm. It's not directly the tricks who are so difficult to ride. We can teach Piaf and Passage quite quick on students who have some talent. I mean, they need to be on a certain level to do it. Mm-hmm. 
but it's not that difficult to ride it. It's more difficult to teach that and to be able to teach. To ride a flying change is also easy to explain and to do it, but teaching is another thing. So, and I think also when we start to teach a horse to Grand Prix, we do some mistakes in our life and then the next one, we, we try not to do the, this mistake again and, and yeah, and so we get better and better mm-hmm. by experience, you know. Yes, yes. But the best way for me is always go first on a schoolmaster, have this feeling and when you can do a nice Grand Prix on a schoolmaster, well, then you get a little bit of feeling also to teach perhaps a young horse the same stuff, you know. Mm-hmm. All right. Now, have you got a book that you could recommend for our listeners? Yes. We have a book that we use in Germany. Mm-hmm. So when you do your levels, yep. you you have to learn from that book. And the book is, uh, the name is The Principles of Riding. Mm-hmm. It's a German National Equestrian Federation who sell this book. It comes from there. So it's really good because they explain everything quite good in, in small words, but easy to understand, not too difficult. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. it's 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 well done. It's a very nice book. And then there is another one, Advanced Techniques of Dressage. So that is then the higher level. It goes like half passes and also some half steps and all that. Yes. The same yes. book. And And both those books are available in English, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. Yep. And yep. there is also one what I find also very interesting and is the book The Dressage Horse from Harry Bolt. Okay. Years ago, this book was never translated. It's a big book. It's a beautiful book with many, many pictures. I have to say that Harry Bolt did amazing work making this book because it's made in the year 70s, I think. Mm-hmm. And... Um, with many pictures and he tells the history from the dressage and he explained exactly the aids by every exercise mm-hmm. from medium to Grand Prix. So the aids, uh, seat aids, leg aids, rain aids, with photos. Mm-hmm. So you can Good. see it. It's amazing. It's well done. Yep. So when you like to know how, what are the aids for PF, well, you buy this book and you can, you go to PF and then you can read the aids. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay. I so very they, interesting. Yeah. 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 I think the the three of those should be a very good complement to riding and coaching. Yeah. Now, what does your future hold? You've done a lot. You've had a lifetime with horses. You've, you know, ridden, coached done very well internationally. What does your future hold? Well, for me, I hope I enjoy really teaching Mm -hmm. and also riding, teaching horses. Yes. And teaching people. Now, um, I'm 62, so there will be an age, I hope, not too quick, Mm -hmm. where I have to stop perhaps riding. But I think I will teach as long as I can. I would like to teach and keep teaching and helping people yep. with riding lessons. I enjoy it just. It's... And um, you teach too. I mean, I know you've taught for a number of years when you first came to Australia, the New South Wales dressage and also Queensland. So, yeah. you know, you were head coach up here as well. The riders that you're coaching now, anyone exciting that you're looking at? You, or you don't have to give their name, but if you're looking at any exciting riders coming up? Well, I think I think so. It's a, a little bit s- slow because I have to say everything could go quicker in Australia. <laughs> but there is one big problem in Australia. The country is too big. Yes. So you can not teach people uh, like you would teach them you would like to teach them four times a week you do Mm -hmm. it just once a week so when you would do it more and the people would love that i would come more but the distance are so so big Mm -hmm. Uh, Mm -hmm. it's it's, uh, impossible that's why everything goes a bit slower but i have a couple good good ones i have a little girl she would like to go to the olympics she's 12 years old Mm -hmm. And she have a very nice pony and she's doing really well in the competitions. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Also by the state championship, she was good. She was third mm-hmm. in the novice test, but that's all start. And, yeah. Sure, 
Sure. And as you say, you know, the basics and getting the trust is very important. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, how can you sum up your philosophy into a lesson today? I can give the writers, I would give the writers the advice um, to try to do everything right, not to be in a hurry, Mm -hmm. not to go too quick with the horses in the test. I came back from the state championship and not everything was so good looking because they entered too quick a certain level and the horses are really not ready. Take time and mm-hmm. and also in the young horse class, I would say, um, the four and the five and the six year old class, when the horse is not ready, it doesn't mean that he is not a good horse because he's not ready, but times horses needs just more time. Mm-hmm. Mentally, they are a bit nervous, they are a bit tense, and when we ask them too much and we go too much to the test, then by times we make them very unhappy and it doesn't work really well and we never hear something back from them later on. Mm -hmm. But if you give your horse a certain time and when you say, well, he's not ready for the four, we will see when he's five. Mm -hmm. And when he's he's not ready for five, and we will see when he's six. And... And when you give it all more time, and when he's ready, you just go. Yes. And when not, you wait a little bit. You know, wait your time. Mm-hmm. Don't be too quick. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And be always a good friend to the horse, you know. Yes, yes. All right, look, this is, I'm sure they'll um, take that into a very satisfying relationship with their horse. Now, how can people contact you, Carlos? Can I leave your details on the show notes page? Um, But just quickly, if someone wants to contact you, what's the best way? Well, the best way, I think, is to ring me on my mobile. Mm -hmm. That is to 0428 756056. All right. And you do travel a lot for clinics. So that's always... Yeah, you travel for clinics yeah, and that's schools right. as well. So if they need to contact you about travelling yeah. to for clinics and schools, and as I say, we'll put those details on the show notes and also an email as well. All right, wonderful, Carlos. Thanks for talking to us today. Bye-bye. Yeah, and I thank you too. Bye-bye. Remember that our comments and instructions are general in nature and do not take into consideration your individual horses or your individual ability and circumstances. If you enjoyed this podcast, then please leave your comment below 